one, Agent Shadow back to help you become the best hunter you can be. And in today's video, I'll be going over some tips and tricks to improve your experience in Monster Hunter Rise. Starting with item loadouts in the radio menu, the buddy plaza and everything you can do there. We'll also go over the buddy board here, the village and hub quest systems and how they work, the item shops, dongo skills, and using the action menu. If you like the video and Monster Hunter Rise content, be sure to subscribe for more. And if you haven't already, hit the bell to enable post notifications so you'll be the first to know when I upload a new video in the future. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about are item loadouts. You've probably noticed it in the menu in your item box. These are preset item inventories that you can set and quickly equip without selecting each item from your item box. This saves a lot of time when preparing for a hunt. To set this up, go ahead and select some items from your item box and put them into your inventory. For a basic loadout, I suggest bringing a range of items like healing, buffs, and trapping equipment. I'll leave a list of what I bring on my hunts for you to reference here. Once your items are selected from the item box and into your inventory, Go back to the item loadout page and select the slot. Then press the X button to register that loadout there. Also, be sure to give it a name so you can remember what the loadout is tailored for. You can make multiple item loadouts, so be sure to try different ones and tailor them to the specific monster you're hunting. To equip the loadout, just press A on the loadout that you want to use. Now that your item loadout is finished, let's set up your radio menu. This is the menu that comes up when pressing L, the button above ZL. You can use this menu to quickly use items without having to scroll to them on the lower item menu. Also, if you're a bow gunner, you can use this menu to craft ammo on the fly. To set this up, open up your start menu and scroll down to radio menu settings. You can set a radio menu while on your quest or back in the village. For now, let's do the quest. This will bring up the radio setting menu. Here you can see the shortcuts and what button on the D-pad they are assigned to. To change an item, select a shortcut and an item that you want to change. You can select an item from the item box or set it to craft an item if you have the required items in your inventory. You can also set it to use certain monster helpers in the cage such as escargot or puppet spiders or bind it to a buddy command. For now, I'm going to change something from the item box. After that's done, go to your item box and register the current item loadout. It's important to do this because radio menu settings are tied to item loadouts meaning you can set specific radio menu settings for each one of your item loadouts and those will become active when using that loadout. You will notice that I now have my whetstone in place of the great wet fish that was there before. Also, I have the adamant seed and the hard shell powder on my second shortcut list now. To use your different shortcuts, press the corresponding direction on the D-pad while holding L. Now it's time for the buddy plaza. This area, as you may have guessed, deals with your buddies and the many things you can do with them. Aside from being our trusted comrades in battle, there's a multitude of things they can do well on their own. We'll start here with the Buddy Scout. You can get new buddies here at the cost of some zenny. Scouting a buddy will bring you to the buddy creation screen where you can create and customize a new buddy. While hiring will bring you to the roster of current buddies for hire. You can see their skills and abilities on the right and select the perfect new buddy. Once you've made your selection and purchased, you can see them on the reserve list in the buddy board. Now on to the dojo. You can put your buddies into the dojo to train and gain more levels, skills, and abilities. Training rounds will let you select how long your buddy stays in training. Once selected, choose which buddy to train. The auto select feature will select the buddies in need of training automatically. Also notice the option to use a lagging apple. This will boost your buddy's training and make it more efficient, making them grow faster. Once you're all done, select confirm. And you can even see your buddy battling against a Totiversary. Next is the Argosy, down by the docks. Here you can send your buddies out to trade for items and bring them back to you. To do this, select Order Items, then Trade Request. Here you will see the slots available. You can have up to three, but will need to finish a side quest called Cultural Exchange and Economic Stimulation to unlock the other two slots. For now, select your open slot and choose Ready. Then select a buddy to send out. It's important to have multiple buddies when using this, so you can send out the max amount. Once you've selected a buddy, select an item for them to find for you. Items range from seeds and berries to plants and fish. You can use L and R to scroll through items. Once you select an item, confirm to send out your buddies. Now that they're on their way, let's talk about buddy bargaining. Here you can select different boosts that range from speeding up the collection rate to increasing the chances of getting a rare item. You can read about what each bargain does on the right side of the screen here. 
Once your bargain is selected, be sure to use a lagging apple to boost the amount of time your buddy spent collecting, which is represented by the colored diamonds here. Note that each diamond equals one quest. After a few quests, you can come back and collect what they found and send it to your item box. Note that your buddies will keep on passively collecting the same item until you change it. Another thing you can do here is exchange for items. This will bring up three different item shops with different items inside of it. Note that these items cost points and not money. Some items you can even buy for points here and then sell for great amounts of money. One cool thing that's a little hidden in this place is the Kahoot Nest. To reach it, come behind the tree and climb up the vines to reach the top. You'll see your Kahoot Nest here where you can grab free items that your Kahoot has collected. This is a great resource for extra lagging apples to help boost your buddy activities and can be gathered from after every quest. Now for the Meow Scenarios. Here you can send your buddies out on quests of their own. To do this, select Meow Scenarios and select Destination. You can choose high rank or low rank. The sparkling indicates that there's a chance to get a rare item in that category. Note that when Rampage activities are active, you can also send your buddies to the Rampage too. Once your destination is selected, choose which buddies to send out. You can send up to four, so remember to go and get lots of extra buddies from the scout. You can have upwards of 15 in total. Once your buddies are selected, use a lagging apple to boost the success rate and press confirm to send them on their way. Once some time has passed, you'll be notified of their return and you can come back here to collect the rewards and items, ranging from crafting items, account items, and also monster parts. Now it's time to talk about the buddy board. This is where you can manage your buddies. Buddy boards can be found all over the village. Wherever there's an item box, there's going to be a buddy board nearby. In the buddy board, there's lots of things you can do, starting with selecting buddies. This lets you set who your active buddies are. You can set up to two, but note that in online lobbies you can only have one buddy at a time even if you have two active. Also note that the active buddy in online lobbies will always be the number one spot. Next is buddy skills. Here you can select which skill your buddy uses from their skill list. Each one is different, so choose which skills will work for you and your buddy. If you want to learn different skills, you can do so by putting your buddy in the dojo. It's important to note that your buddy only has a set amount of skill memory slots and each skill takes up one or two. If you want to use a skill, you may have to remove a different one to make room for it. Next is Palamute gear, not to be confused with weapons and armor. These are specialized tools your Palamute can use during the hunt to buff themselves or special weapons to deal extra damage. You can read what each piece of gear does and pick which one works for you and your Palamute. If you want more gear for your Palamute as well as other pets, you can unlock them by doing the side quests given by the K9 Master Inukai. Note that Palamute use this gear passively and you won't need to do anything else but equip them. Next is Behavior. This is where you can set how your Palamute fights and you have three options. Basic will make your Palamute attack within close range of the monster. The Pinsir will make your Palamute flank the monster and work with you to create a Pinsir attack. While Follow will keep them by your side at all times. Palicos are a bit simpler. You can set them to only attack large monsters or make them a priority over any other monsters in the area. You can also set them to attack small monsters only or to prioritize them, or you can let them attack whatever is nearby. In the Manage Equipment menu, you can change your buddy's armor and weapons, sell unused armor and weapons, and choose what armor and weapons is shown and set equipment loadouts for your buddies. Note that all of your buddies can equip armor and weapons, so don't forget about the ones you buy from the Buddy Scout. Appearance and layered armor settings can be used to change your buddy's clothing color and layered armor. And dismissing a buddy will remove them from your list permanently, so think hard about whether you want to dismiss a buddy or not. Now time for quest. As you already know, there's two types of quests, village and hub. The village quests are single player and cannot be done in a group, but don't worry, because the monster HP is scaled for that, meaning it's a little easier. Six star is the highest current rank that you can reach in the village quest. And note that some monsters you cannot fight with these types of quests. You can start village quests from the village maiden Hinoa in the Steelworks. Hub quests are multiplayer quests. As such, the monster's HP is scaled for multiplayer, meaning they're a little tougher to do solo. 
Hub quests are the key to increasing your hunter rank to max, and also where you can find a quest for the more rare special monsters. You can start these at my waifu, I mean uh, the hub made in Minoto in the Gathering Hub. There's also Rampage quests, but I think I'll cover that in another video since there's a lot to cover there. I also want to acknowledge side quests here for they are important as they will help with unlocking a lot of things in game, like dongo skills, sub camps, and gear for your buddies among other things. You get side quests from talking to the villagers of Kamara when they have either a tan or blue text symbol above their head. To view your side quests, you can go to the side quest option in the start menu. Once complete, you can return to the person to collect rewards. The item shop is where you can buy items useful in the hunt. You can buy items directly to your pouch or to the item box for later use, so be sure to stock up on some good items. Every so often, the shop will have a sale where certain items are sold for half off. This will also trigger the lottery where you can spend money for a chance to earn some really, really good items. One of the things you'll be doing the most here is melding talismans. Talismans are pieces of equipment that give you extra skills. This can improve your overall build, so get a little creative in mixing and matching your talismans with your armor. To create talismans, head to the melting pot and choose a melding method. Note that different colors represent the rarity of talismans that can be created using that method, and also cost points to meld. Different methods have different skills to choose from, and also can craft a different amount of talismans. Once you've selected a method, you will need to use the monster parts to fill up the gauge to 150. You can see how many points each monster part will give here. Once you've filled the gauge, you can confirm to start the melding process. This takes some time, and depending on the method, you'll have to wait a few quests to pick up all the talismans. You can input multiple requests for talismans, so do as many as you can. After a while, you can go and collect them, and they'll be sent to the item box where you can change them by going to Manage Equipment and Chain. Now let's get into the Canteen and Dongo skills. We will go over ordering Dongo and what the skills are, then talk about the Motley mix after. So, ordering a meal. When ordering, you can pay with either points or zenny. Then we're going to go to order money Dongo, which brings us to the menu. Here is the page where all the types of Dongo are listed. We need to select three. In order to filter these choices through their respective effects, you can press L or R. Powerful flavors deal with attack boost skills such as Dongo Booster which gives you an attack and defense buff at the start of a quest. While determined flavors deal more with defensive skills and elemental resistances. Dongo Moxie, for example, is a skill that makes it so if an attack were to one-shot you from a certain amount of health, you wouldn't faint, but instead be at 1 HP and be able to heal up. Unusual flavors deal with utility skills like Dongo Polisher, which speeds up your weapon sharpening time. And grandiose flavors deal with endemic life and quest rewards and buddy skills. Mix and match these different Dongo to maximize your performance in the hunt or increase your quest rewards and odds of getting rare material. Once you've selected three, you can register the Dongo selection to the usual menu, where you can quickly select it instead of having to individually choose the three again. Note the activation percentage chance here, which tells you the likelihood of getting the skill to activate when you're eating for it. If you want to ensure a 100% activation chance, you can use a Dongo ticket. The Motley Mix is where you can trade items and monster parts for healing items and such. You can also farm Dongo tickets here. The more items you throw into the mix, the more items you'll get out of it. After a certain amount of items, you'll be given some Dongo tickets from Yomagi. Last thing we're going to go over is the action bar. You can see this on the lower right side of the screen here. You can use this to join quests anywhere in Kamara by pressing the left on the D-pad, and then up on the D-pad. You can also use this to perform chat functions and gestures, call your Kahoot to change his clothes, or quickly relocate anywhere in the village. Just scroll to what you want to do on the D-pad, then press up or down. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Monster Hunter Rise content and tutorials. Also, check out the link to my Twitch channel where I stream Monster Hunter Rise and host open lobbies to hunt with you guys and gals. You can also follow my Twitter to be notified whenever I upload a video or go live. Until next time, good luck and happy hunting.